Yeah, so um, take advantage of tax avoidance or tax elimination strategy first before you go over the deferral strategy. I know a lot of you must be thinking, I didn't mention about 1031 exchanges, right? Um, 1031 exchanges are great, but as a matter of fact, it defers your taxes to a future date. It's not eliminating your taxes completely. And we all know tax rates are increasing, right? Uh, and that's the last thing you want to leave your family members, you know, to pay for behind you. So we kind of focus more on tax elimination strategies. And there are strategies where you can eliminate almost 90% of your taxes, even on small or big property sale. The, the goal here is plan in advance. Plan in advance even before your intent letter is signed. And the number one thing where people fail, they kind of plan after the fact. So before the intent letter is signed, before the money has made it to you, I would say plan in advance on that side. Um, so I always say take advantage of uh, what we call postpone your income, defer your income to the next year, prepone your expenses as much as you can in the current year, and that buys you a little bit of a time to strategize and plan as well, but never postpone your taxes to the future years because as much as we can eliminate from the root source, that's what we want to go forward with, right? Um, I know many people have heard about Augusta loophole and many have not, but you know it, the, the importance of implementation of any track strategy lies in how you have put together all the documentation in an audit ready way. Um, the Augusta loophole, uh, just to give you a little bit uh, as a matter of fact, is a tax ta strategy that was designed based on uh, Georgia's Masters Golf Tournament. And I'm pretty sure many of you have must have heard. Uh, in the olden days, uh, during those Masters Golf Tournament, business owners were renting um, their houses for about 14 days a year and take, getting huge tax deductions. So IRS came and said, okay, per the IRS tax section code 280, um, you know, a business owner can rent their personal home to their business up to 14 days a year and can get a tax deduction. This income is not taxable to the bus uh, business owner personally, but business gets a tax deduction for this expense. Many people don't know, but for most of these rental properties, where does all the meeting happen? Where does analyzing the property happen? It happens from the comfort of your home. So people don't know it, but they are doing this. The only missing part is have to create the documentation and have to make it audit ready. And that's where a valid tax advisor comes in to guide you on how to take the advantage of these deductions. Thank you for sharing that uh, with with everyone tonight, because it's been a huge eye opener for me. And um, your your team and yourself have helped me so much personally for the 2023 tax year. And then, of course, this year, because we meet on a pretty regularly basis. Um, so at this point, I'd like to open it up for some. I have one more question questions. that came in, though, oh. from me. Oh, OK. Go ahead, so sorry, Maria. Candace. <laughs> so um, this is just from us because we have asked our investors to get this who have IRA investments. We've asked them to get an individual EIN number for their IRA accounts because of this UBIT. And if it's, can you explain that? Because I am having a hard time explaining it to my investors and I just want to talk about it and maybe what it means and how we can better explain it to everyone yeah yeah so you know you don't want to give out your social security number you know for various reasons but for you but to keep it clear if and when you sell that property and they get returned uh having it clear under the ein is definitely helpful for future purposes as well um, and things can get really tangled up because you don't know how long this property you know three to five years many of them are there but if once they once it's inside the LLC, it's like taking the loan under the retirement account. There are multiple ways to do it. Uh, once you have the EIN, by the way, 
You can, UBIT is one of the structure, but another one is you just take the loan from your retirement to your LLC and invest it. That's a little bit of a safer version as well. Uh, but you can also do the UBIT, uh, you know, uh, under the LLC um, with the EIN as well. Oh, okay. So, but like even for the IRA, because the IRA is, is with the custodian. So like they're needing to have that custodian, like the IRA or the EIN for the IRA. So yes. they can use that for other things as well. Yeah. So like other investments, mm -hmm. I would say like, you know, you did this first project on the multifamily unit in three years, sure. that property is done. You want to do another, you can use that same under the same LLC EIN. Nice. Cool. Uh, and there is actually another question about uh, to maximize my tax benefits, should I create different LLCs for short term purchase and long term property holdings or what do you advise? Absolutely. So short term is your active business. Long term is your passive business. Long term should, goes on your Schedule E if you're filing 1040, reporting on your 1040. Short term goes on your Schedule C, which is like an active business income. So it's highly recommended you separate out. At the end of the day, everything is going to fall on your 1040. Um, so that's not an issue. Uh, and when it comes to buying property, if you're buying, you know, single units or, you know, smaller units, um, I recommend not buy too many properties under one LLC just to limit your liability exposure. Because sometimes I see people have one property in Florida, one property in Texas, one property in Pennsylvania, and all of them are looped under the same LLC. Um, try to have different state in different LLC or you know, have a limit of maybe million dollar or $1.5 million in one LLC, and then you create another LLC to buy other properties because that limits your liability exposure as well. Um, and it just keeps things cleaner for you. Um, we do have one question that kind of related to mine. It's can you um, do what you were talking about with the IRA investments after the fact if you bought with your IRA? Like, can you reinvest it and move around with the um, EIN? I'm assuming uh, with it. To be honest, I'm not the financial advisor expert on that side. My expert is on the CPA side and taxes side. So I, I don't know if there are any restrictions from the IRA point of view, mm -hmm. um, but I'm more than happy to look into it uh, if someone has that question. And from, that from our side, we've gotten the EIN number after someone has invested. So it hasn't been at the same time. So that's okay. And then we've been able to move that from investment to investment if the IRA is still under the same custodian. So we've been able to move it around. But um, I'm glad I'm glad you said that too, though. So it's one yeah. of those things so, that we would you work know, together. For, you, for your side, um, as an investor, it's easier. But when it comes to your retirement portfolio and your IRA, you know, they have different rules and you have to make sure you're ready to document what happened, when happened, that sequence to not confuse anyone because what happens in this whole process, um, the investor, they forget about the right terminology, right timing and everything, and they confuse the another person and that's where the whole mess is created. And I think that just boils down to you. So that synergy and that step-by-step -step, uh, actions taken, it's very important to communicate in the right terminology at right order. Right. And Maggie is asking a question like, can you move money from an IRA to real estate? I mean, that's my favorite. My favorite type of investment is moving money from an IRA to real estate deals, especially if it's like a new development or if it's a deal that, you know, we, I get so excited. Like I will talk about this until the cows come up. Like I will just go all in a way and how you can invest your IRA because of all these adv adv um, advantages. But from a tax or from like your side, what are the advantages of investing your IRA versus just keeping it in, yeah. in its account? Yeah. You know, um, some, many times people want to make the investment uh, and it's just a matter of cash flow, right. And money mm -hmm. sitting in your IRA because of the cumulative benefit, uh, you know, investment. Uh, I would highly, highly recommend if you're getting started, um, and you have a huge portfolio of retirement account, uh, it's a smart idea to do it for various reasons. One is for diversification, 
Because if all 90% of your wealth or say even 70% of your wealth is sitting just in a retirement account, tomorrow, whatever happens in the economy and the value of your retirement portfolio drops, that's a huge risk. So the diversification is extremely important. And I don't know if any one of you have heard of Ray Dalio. He recommends at least 15 to 20 different diversification buckets, and that reduces your risk of failure by more than 90%. So that's one of the things. Um, from your IRA, there are multiple ways to take the money out depending on your IRA account. If it is simple 401k account and you have an active W-2 job, you can borrow a loan against your 401k, against your 401k without causing any tax consequences and invest in the real estate. So no tax consequences, you got, you got a loan at a nominal interest rate against your 401k, and you can set up to pay at your every paycheck, you pay nominal amount towards that loan repayment. And you can, you can definitely uh, do that. There is also self-directed IRA uh, option, which is very popular as well. And if you have the HSA and money sitting in your HSA, you can also invest under your HSA into the real estate account as well. So there are multiple ways, depending on the type of the IRA account you have, there are multiple ways to go around it. This is this is fantastic. I'm so glad you said that because it's so hard when you have a financial advisor or a CPA that it almost blocks you from doing things like this just because they don't know. And yes. that's why it's important to have someone who understands either real estate or just investing in general and how much you are able to help us and how much like you can help, like just like with the coupon book. I'm going back to that. How much you can help us really take advantage of things that we already have in our arsenal, things that we can already take advantage, things that we can write off and things that can help us that we didn't even know is possible. So it's Absolutely. so important that if you have a financial advisor or a CPA that doesn't understand what you're talking about, find a new one. And I think someone has, I think Jasmine has put your link below. I hope, I hope it's okay that we are putting your contact information out. I hope you are licensed in every state. Um, <laughs> if not, and maybe you could push it out to some other people, but <laughs> I'm hoping. As a CPA, we are allowed to practice in all states. Um, there is one question that asked in the chat box, and I want to address this yeah. Um, and this is uh, from E. Castillo. What happens with K-1 when you go to file taxes when I use my IRA to, IRA to invest? Um, and, you know, uh, the investment you are doing is either under your personal name or under the LLC name. So K-1 flows to you personally. It does not go to the IRA. So that's a two different things. Um, so, you know, your IRA is not filing any taxes or anything. You are borrowing money or you are cashing out money or you're doing self-directed IRA and you are doing it that way. So, you know, there, there shouldn't be any issues with the uh, K-1 on that one. And just knowing what you're investing in and, and there's some investments that have great depreciation and then maybe you don't use your IRA for that investment if it has some great depreciation or if there's some deals where the depreciation isn't very good then that's the one you want to use your IRA on because you're not going to be able to take advantage of so much on it so I'm glad we're having this discussion and I'm glad we're able to to highlight that so yes I'm glad we're putting your information in because it's so important, especially when I became a real estate professional uh, two years ago, it, it made a huge difference for, for me and my family and just getting a return instead of paying. Yes, that's yes, that's, that, it makes a huge difference. And yeah. above all, it gives you independence. It yes. gives you confidence. Um, and you are all three of you, the, the community that you have created, um, it just embodies a lot of strength, um, empathy and, you know, leadership. Uh, and it just, you know, it's an unwavering commitment that other women know that they can come and they can depend and rely on you. And in the era where we are, this is like so much more important because family members doubt sometimes, friends doubt sometimes, 
but I feel like this community is not doubting anyone. It's just being there, at, you know, giving the foundation for a stepping stone and for success uh, and confidence because so many of us want to do so many things and we don't know where to start. Oh, I love so that you say that because that's the whole purpose of this help support inspire each other uh some are a long way ahead of us and some others are barely starting and that's totally okay some are completely you know like we read real estate but some others they have no idea where to start so just having this community uh, where you know you can count on somebody somebody you can pick up the phone and call and I have this problem I don't understand this as somebody's gonna you know advise you or just guide you to somebody who does so tell us a little bit about what she builds owns invest to you um I feel like uh, on the surface, even though this is about real estate and it gives confidence about the investment and all of that but beyond that, I feel like it's giving confidence, whether it's business, family, or community, because one place, if you get confidence and you're 10 on 10, it has a domino effect in all other areas of life. So it's building she um, herself. So that's what I, I'm getting the vibes here in our short discussion today. <laughs> That you nail it. That's exactly what we strive to. Like we need to become the best version of ourselves, not just professionally, but on every single aspect, like personally, professionally, spiritually, because everything has a, a, an effect. And as women, we have so much impact on everybody around us, our yes. families, our partners. So that's the whole purpose. So thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we have a few minutes, ladies. Uh, if you have more questions, Questions, please put them on the chat. Uh, don't don't waste this uh, minutes that we have. Um, and then I'm gonna share my screen really quick before we go to more questions. Uh, if you are in Dallas, join us uh, October fourth and fifth. We're gonna have a, an event where we're gonna talk about everything about buying commercial real estate from acquisitions, funding, asset management. So it's like drinking from a fire hose. But not only that, it's uh, all hands on deck, uh, hands on, uh, where we are actually doing it. It's not like a class. So just join us. Uh, we, we put the chat, uh, we put the link on the chat every single day but uh join us if you're in dallas if you are in austin we are super excited to have this uh event where we're gonna do crafts while we network and connect with others uh, with other women from she and from other industries uh we drink mimosas so it's gonna be so much fun if you're in austin join us uh september 28th and last but not least don't forget to grab your merch we have our store so uh carry the brand uh gifted i like to have this and when it's my friends uh birthdays i just give them because this is just like me i'll say it's a brand that everybody can carries so we love that uh so here's the link and we will put it on the chat it's on our web page where you can purchase your merch all right that was it let's go back to your questions do we have more questions we did have one i know you answered it on the chat but maybe we can answer it in person too uh is that about the cost seg and the capital gain yeah. okay mm -hmm. yeah so you know to answer and elaborate a little bit more if you have a capital gain uh, on one property and then you have another property and you are doing cost seg um, the cost seg you have to think about you know you only get the tax accelerated depreciation, a certain percentage of the total property, right? So depending on the value of the other property you own, I would say about, uh, you know, certain percentage, uh, every million dollar, about, you know, $70,000 goes towards a cost seg accelerated depreciation 
in whatever is that accelerated depreciation, you multiply your tax bracket to really identify the tax savings on that. So it's a little bit of a formula on that side. But as long as your capital gain is smaller than your cost set, you are fine. If your capital gain is way higher than your cost set, then we need to layer more strategies on top of the cost set. So it's a kind of layering more strategy um, over and above the cost segregation study. And she has I lots actually, of strategies, ladies. Yeah. Um, there was another, there was, and I know personally, so <laughs> call her, book an appointment. You will not regret it. Um, the other question that just popped in as you were explaining that was, could you please explain the difference between the advantages or disadvantages, commercial and residential investments? Yeah. So let me put it this way. You know, people get a lot of time confused with the real estate investment. I always uh, ask people to look at the end result you're trying to achieve. That's number one, not the tax, okay? The taxes comes after the fact. The end result is, what is your risk tolerance level? Do you feel comfortable with the residential capital outlay required? Are you willing to put in that much of legwork to maintain your residential property? Or are you looking something with minimal efforts and want to be part of a big GP or LP deal? Um, and you want to leverage on someone else's capital, what is your sweet spot? That's the first thing to identify. Second thing, how much money we have. First thing I always say, what you want to do. Second thing is money, because money can be figured out from the combination of things, your savings, your retirement account, multiple places. And then the third, last thing comes the taxes. Um, many times people think, okay, if I invest in real estate, my tax problem is solved. Answer is no. <laughs> so do the real estate for first to increase your net wealth, to build the equity, to diversify. And the byproduct of that is the tax saving. So I would kind of think of that way. <laughs> and Hello. I'm more than happy to, you know, if anyone has any question, definitely reach out. I'm more than happy to help you understand as it relates to you personally. Uh, and, you know, there are a lot of tax strategies we do, uh, you know, in addition to this cost seg and 1031 and all of that. If I start putting down the names, I think we will be spending rest of the night together here tonight. So I'd rather not go into too much details because a lot of information will confuse people and I don't want to confuse so I would always look into what is the end result you are trying to achieve and then rest all can be figured out. Same thing for us. We always say like, that's why we always say like book a call with us because we, everybody is in a completely different journey, has completely different financial goals, financial situations, uh, risk, risk tolerance, just like you said. So when we get to see the whole picture, that's when we can say like, maybe this is something, you know, that you shouldn't be thinking, or this is actually the right fit for you. And we are very transparent, you know, like we have different investment opportunities and they are completely different, like completely different strategy, you know, land, land new construction, that also has any depreciation the cash flow is very low and then the multifamily is very uh, high on depreciation and cash flow. So it's a completely different play game, uh, but we have that diversification, which is good, but it depends on where you are in life. So book a call with us, uh, you know, we just like to hang out with you. And if there is a way we can add value, which uh, we will do it. Uh, book a call uh, with Mina. We already put her link and we have one more question and uh, after that we should be ready to go. But it's when using business credit to either buy property or using it for acquisitions, uh, should I be aware of, what should I be aware of uh, other than keeping uh, and good bookkeeping? Uh, can you repeat the first part? Did you say business credit? When you are using a uh, business credit or to either buy property or using it for acquisitions, what should I be aware of? Other okay. than good. 
so if I'm understanding right, um, and if not, please put it in the chat section. Uh, I'm understanding this question as if you're using business loan or mm -hmm. credit to invest in a real estate or acquire new business, what you should be keeping in mind. Um, of course, you know, making sure you're making a timely payment from your business or business credit cards. Okay. So uh, business credit cards have a definitely high interest rate. If you can get the business line of credit or business loan, that's highly recommendable. But if you're using business credit cards to invest in the property or something, um, it's nothing different than just paying your credit card bills in a timely fashion. Uh, whatever monthly you can pay. Uh, most people have the tendency to pay their credit card on a monthly basis. I highly recommend you split that payment maybe twice a month or four times a week. And that makes a huge, huge, huge difference. So for your business credit card, if you have borrowed a loan or you, know, you just kind of overswiped and whether use it for investment or whatever, Consider making small four payments, weekly payment, that will make a difference in your interest. At the same time, it's more digestible for you from the business cash flow point of view. Same thing as we are talking about this installment payment. If you have a mortgage on a property, most people make monthly payment. I highly recommend at least twice a month, you break that payment twice, into divide into two, pay half, 15th of the month, pay other half, 30th of the month, and make sure you reach out to your credit card provider or your mortgage company and tell them the first half is going all towards the principal. And it makes a huge difference from cash flow as well as from the interest rate. That's, That's really awesome. good. So <laughs> good. So good. Thank you so much. Oh, I love it. Up. Thank you. Thank you. I thank you for inviting me. I really enjoyed our conversation. Thank you for having me today.